Hey everybody, it's Lon Simon, and welcome to the Extras channel. We've got another unboxing to do today. This is the new Intel NUC that is running with the latest low-end technology from Intel. This is the Gemini Lake generation. Now I got this for about $120 or so, and I'll put a link to where you can find these in the video description. Now this is a bare bones PC kit, meaning it does not come with memory or storage. So this is the hardware. If you've seen the Intel NUCs before, it looks a lot like the other ones, but inside it is different. On the front, you've got two USB 3.0 ports. Uh, this one here is yellow because you can charge your devices with the NUC here, even when the NUC is switched off. You have another just regular USB 3 port there. This is a combo headphone microphone jack on that side. Your power button is right there. Let's peel off that little sticker there. There we go. And then on the side here, we've got nothing but some venting. There is a fan inside because these do need to get actively cooled. I'll let you know how noisy it is in the main review. Now on the back, you've got two HDMI 2.0 outputs, which means that you can drive two 4K displays at the same time. So this might be something of interest if you are uh, looking to do some data entry work or something and you want a very nice high resolution display. A lot of people also use these for home theater as well. And we'll be testing out some of its capabilities there. Gigabit Ethernet, another two USB 3.0 ports and your power goes in here. I believe it's a 65 watt power adapter. I'll check on that. And um, we'll maybe do some power testing on another Extras Channel video if you are interested in some of the nuances of that. Over here is another audio output, but this doubles as an optical output. So if you are uh, using fiber optic to go into your home theater receiver, for example, you can do that uh, through here. So they do try to cover a lot of bases with these little, uh, little nucks here. I'll take it apart in a second once we get through the rest of the stuff in the box here. So we've got some literature, and this is often important to know what kind of RAM to get. So uh, I will let you know in that other video which RAM I chose for it. Uh, this does require DDR4 RAM uh, up from DDR3 that these devices used to require. So I'm eager to see what kind of performance differences that makes. You'll get a little sticker here in the box for your Intel inside, and then you get a Visa mount here. So if you want to mount this on the back of a monitor, uh, you can do that. So that's another option you have there. Digging further into the box, we have our US power adapter here uh, and the power cord itself. And this looks like a max of, let's see here if it gives me the wattage on this one. I'll have to do some uh, calculation on it. So I'm not sure exactly what the uh, output wattage is, but I think it's probably about 60 or 65 watts. I'm disappointed that it doesn't have USB Type-C because it would be really cool to just plug in a, a single cable from a dock, for example, and get a few more ports and all the other stuff uh, going out there, but maybe some other manufacturers will approach that. You also have some screws here, which I assume are for mounting storage. So uh, what I'm going to do now is unscrew the bottom here and show you what is inside. Okay, so I've got these four screws unscrewed here at the bottom. What I always love about the NUX is that they integrate the screws inside of the little rubber feet. So you don't lose anything and it's very easy to get in and out of this whenever you want. Now, all of the consumer facing upgrades are on the bottom of the board here. So you shouldn't have to pull the entire board out and there's really nothing else to upgrade beyond what you're going to see here. So uh, what we've got are the two RAM slots here. This is again, DDR4. It's got a little sticker on here to tell you what to look for. And I do recommend putting in RAM in pairs because the computer performs better with two sticks of RAM versus one. And I'll cover why in the main review. Now here you see a cable going to the top of the device here. And this is because you put your SATA hard drive in this top spot here. So this is like a, a little two and a half inch uh, SSD that I'm going to use, a regular SATA SSD. Uh, it's gonna slide right in there and then I'll screw it down. And I'm going to do that assembly on the uh, main video here for the uh, initial assembly of this device. And uh, that will get you the hard drive connection to get going. So the only storage option is to use uh, a SATA drive like this. There's no M2 option on here like there might be on some competing uh, mini PCs. Uh, the other thing to note is that the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth are uh, hard uh, soldered onto the board on this one. Sometimes you have a little card that's in a slot. Uh, this one has got that Bluetooth 5.0 radio and the AC radio uh, integrated into this spot right there. Uh, another thing is that they have uh, jumpers for uh, two USB 2.0 ports, which are right over here, these two uh, white things right there. So if you wanted to get two additional USB options, you could do that. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters. 
including Gold Level supporters of the Black Eyed and Blues Music Hour podcast, Chris Allegretta, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.